Hi everyone, meteorologist Joe Chaffee, meteorologistjoechaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, ssstormchasers.com, and soon nycweathernow.com. So let's take you through the latest with regards to Tropical Storm Matthew. And one of the things that we're picking up on, if you look at the, sat the uh, water vapor satellite uh, image, is that Matthew continues to strengthen. Uh, the Air Force plane found the pressure now down to 982 millibars. One of the things we're noticing uh, is uh, the much more symmetrical look that this uh, hurricane is taking now on the water vapor imagery. You see this uh, almost large circular ball uh, right near where the center is. The center is right about there, so it's really tucked in now underneath all the heavy uh, convection, and it's continuing to move on a course actually a little south of due west and it, after that it's going to make a turn now there's you can see there's a patch of dry air right in here but what this uh, hurricane has been doing is the dry air patches and, and it's right in here actually it's a little tongue of dry air that's coming down from the Atlantic down over Haiti and the Dominican Republic. But what's been happening is that these dry patches are not getting entrained into the circulation. Instead, they're just getting wiped out by this really large, large storm. You can see how uh, the, the large extent of the moisture field, and uh, you know, there's a feeder that's coming right out of South America that's going uh, into uh, the tropical system. So, you know, you've got a really uh, dynamic looking system here. And conditions are pretty much favorable all along as it continues its move again. Looks like it's moving a little south of west. Uh, here's, uh, we have the islands of Aruba and Curaçao and Bonaire. Uh, looks like it should pass no north of those islands, though they'll probably experience <clears throat> some tropical storm conditions as this thing uh, goes on by. Uh, we'll uh, switch off over to the uh, visible, the uh, uh, infrared satellite, and you can see how that, that symmetrical ball that is, is continuing to expand and that feeder of moisture that's coming up uh, from South America and then just r whips right around it. Also, you know, evident, I want to point out, here's that deep trough that's in the Ohio Valley that extends down into the Gulf of Mexico. You can see how the clouds are moving uh, from the southwest to the northeast and up the east coast. So we have that weakness uh, pretty much getting into position here so that uh, when Matthew gets a little bit further to the west in about two days, it's going to make that turn to the right and turn northward and make its way uh, right up uh, toward, over Jamaica. The new GFS takes it right smack over the island and then over eastern Cuba and then into the Bahamas. So we're going to show you that in uh, just a second, uh, what the model is doing tonight and I'm just going to caution everybody that uh, we, we're going to have uh, we're, we're still talking about day eight and day nine in the long range here so there's a large margin of error and by the way in the short range the GFS has the pressure at a thousand two uh, whereas it's already down to 982 so it's off by 20 millibars so you know whether we can subtract that error out all along I just don't think that the GFS really has a handle here at all on the depth. And, and some t a lot of times the models don't handle uh, depths of tropical storms all that well. And you can see on this track, it actually is tracking a little further west than previous runs. goes right over Jamaica. This is uh, Monday night. So the model now is decidedly slower. Uh, the European has been advertising the much slower rate of movement. Uh, with Matthew uh, all along, and the GFS has been much faster. Um, I think this is going to be the case, uh, that the European is going to be right on that in terms of the speed. Now, it does intensify it uh, uh, between the time it moves off the coast of Jamaica onto the coast of eastern Cuba. I keep for some reason wanting to say western Cuba, but it's eastern Cuba, maybe east central Cuba, comes out the other side, right through the western Bahamas, passes east of Miami by not too many miles, um, a, a little over maybe 150 miles or so, and then moves straight north. You think it's about to go into uh, toward the Carolinas when it suddenly starts to make go more northeast, 
skims the North Carolina coast and the Outer Banks and actually brings some uh, bands of uh, rain, uh, some of the bands on, on the west side, uh, onto the coast. And then it starts to kick it out to the east. Now, why is it doing that on this particular run? Well, let's take a look at the upper air because that is, of course, going to be the driving force to all of this. And, you know, there are some uh, changes uh, on this run that I think are really important for us to, uh, to examine. So let me just get to uh, the different region so we can uh, get a, a better view of uh, what exactly is going on. I'm going to take this this view here okay and we're going to back it up <clears throat> just a little bit oh sorry about that i want that one scroll it down and i'm going to just back it up at a couple of key points now uh, when we look at what's happening here here's our hurricane matthew uh, this is tuesday afternoon coming off the coast of Cuba and heading into the Bahamas. So what do we have in the upper air? There's a couple of things here that are really important. First of all, we have this the Atlantic Ridge uh, that's nosing back toward the coastline. Here we have the trough that's coming out in the plains. We also have the remnant upper low from the Ohio Valley that's parked itself over, uh, over Long Island and New York City. And that's creating a weakness right in here, and you can see it. The weakness is off the Florida coast. I have the arrow drawn there a little bit too far west, but uh, you can see where the weakness is. So, you know, it could very well track anywhere uh, through that weakness. Now, over time, what happens is uh, any one of these players being stronger or weaker will make a huge difference in, in the outcome. Uh, right now, the presence of that upper low that's sitting off the coast now of Long Island. You can see it right in here. I think this is really important because it, it is extending a weakness down into uh, the eastern Gulf of Mexico and back over into the Yucatan Peninsula. So that would kind of, that to me would suggest that you would get a track to the east of that line that I just drew. Meanwhile, that western trough is starting to swing around, so it's too far west really to exert its influence, which would be to try to draw it more northward, okay? So this appearance of this upper low um, is critical. Uh, is it real? Is it overdone? Is, is the model correct in leaving part of that uh, upper air system that it's affecting us now, leaving a piece of it back? The European had this. Uh, a couple of runs ago, and it also had it on the day run. So it would suggest to me that that is something that is probably going to be a player, another player now that we're going to have to watch through all of this. Now, the ultimate track, see what's happening again in terms of the model timing, okay, that upper trough pulls out, but the system that's in the planes now is already uh, swinging around and it seems that it's too far west and north to exert it, uh, enough of an influence where it would draw it back to the coast. At least that's the way it looks on this particular run. Now, ultimately, there's its closest point when it gets to North Carolina. Then what, what happens up in that northern stream is that this whole thing winds up just kind of flattening out. So you have basically a west-southwest flow from... Uh, Pennsylvania and New York northward. So that would suggest that the system is not going to be moving up, but moving out, if that uh, is correct. But I want to point out a couple of things because we are, again, now in the uh, day eight, day nine of the long range, and we know that it could come in different. One of the things that I'm, I, I'm, I'm picking up on, there, this little arm that's coming through if that winds up being a little deeper that could have uh, an impact in making it further west if it's flatter it'll be further east again we don't know if this is correct and i think that is ultimately um, what we're going to have to uh, decide over the next several days uh, with different model runs i'm going to go back to a wider view of uh, north america so you can take a look as soon as I can, there we go, clean it up just a little bit. And one of the things that's changed 
is the system here in the west that comes into the Pacific Northwest. This really prevents this system from being deep, uh, like as, as was shown uh, several runs ago. Uh, if, if this was not here, you would have more of a ridge out here in the western states, and that would deepen this trough here in the east. So the presence of this system coming into the Pacific Northwest is basically changing uh, the upper flow uh, on uh, further east. Again, we, we suppose that that's, that's the case, but there are the, the, this could wind up being further offshore. It could be slower. That would leave a little more. That would leave more room for a ridge to be there and a deeper trough. Again, too many variables, too much time uh, between now and next Friday. And by the way, we have seen uh, the models lately being very volatile, not just in the long range, but even in the short range. We just saw uh, this happen with this upper low that we're experiencing right now. Um, this upper low was advertised by models, and then late last week, it completely changed and said no it's just going to move along and be progressive and we would just see a you know, weather front basically move on through and that would be it instead it wound up going back to this original solution so i would just caution to try to put too much stock in one model run no matter which way it shows if this if tonight's run had come in and showed a, a storm coming right up or inland of the coast i would be saying pretty much the same thing we have to um just continue to watch how, how uh, the models go over the next three days. Um, I think at, over the weekend we might be able to uh, finally come to a conclusion in terms of uh, what's, what's going to happen with all this, but way too much volatility in the models to take one run uh, and make it uh, the, the uh, ultimate solution with regards to Hurricane Matthew. So I have a full post on uh, meteorologist joechoppy.com that breaks this all down in different time frames, plus, uh, you know, the latest satellite loops. You can look at them again. And uh, don't forget, uh, we'll uh, be posting about this, of course, uh, throughout the day on Friday and over the weekend as we watch Tropical Storm Matthew uh, continuing to strengthen and possibly becoming a major hurricane with a major threat setting up for the island of Jamaica.